This is Cobb Island, Maryland. A pleasant, oh, about an hour and 10 minute ride for me. Go up 301 through King George. I believe this is Charles County, Maryland. Never been here. So it's another one of my exploratory motorcycle rides. My bike's parked behind that truck. I had lunch at the Scuttlebutt, which is this establishment just across the street. Pretty good cheeseburger. And now what I'm gonna do is just uh, ride around the island here. Check it out, it's mostly a residential area. And let's take a look. I'm at the point of the island and as far as residential islands go around these parts, this one isn't bad. Looks like a nice little community. There's your view. That's the Potomac River, by the way. And uh, let's see if I can spot it. Somewhere out there is Colonial Beach, Virginia, across the river. Maybe that's it out there. I don't know. Pleasant little community. Now, you wouldn't think that Cobb Island would have a claim upon history, but you would be wrong. Here on Cobb Island in December 1900, Reginald Aubrey Fessenden, assisted by Frank W. Very, while experimenting in wireless telephony for the first time sent and received intelligible speech by electromagnetic waves between two masts, 50 feet high and one mile apart. A milestone in radio history. Now there's no getting around it. Maryland is a blue state. However, not all of it is blue. There are spots of red and apparently Cobb Island is one of those. Check it out. Joe Biden is not my president Impeach China Joe and Kami Harris. Let's go, Brandon. Biggest idiot Democrats ever nominated. Stop one party rule. And a comment about Fauci. Oh, by the way, this is also a golf cart community. One just went by me here. Here's some more about that milestone in radio history. Professor Frank Berry. Twin antenna mass at Very Cottage, site of the historic first wireless radio voice reception. Um, the message, hello, one, two, three, four. Is it snowing where you are, Mr. Thyssen? If it is, telegraph back and let me know. That was the message, was received here and was perfectly intelligible. He immediately telegraphed his back his response, yes. This site later became the permanent residence of Barry, who renamed it Villa Saint Souci, as it remains today. Fessenden transmitted the historic voice message from Vickers House, the large summer home of George Vickers that had been built after the acquired, he acquired the entire island in 1889. And the Vickers House is that way. But, this was the site of this milestone in radio history, Sans Souci, unlike any other. And here's the other sign showing the other radio reception point, the Vickers, well, it's called the Vickers House. Worked from this large summer home a Philadelphia businessman, George Vickers, that had been built after he acquired the entire island, Cobb Island, was remote for secrecy, but accessible by steamboats from Washington, D.C. The receiving station was at the very cottage, which is that way. The only other dwelling on the island in 1900. So apparently, it was the Vickers house, which looked like that, here.